All right. You know what this means? A little more Pikmin action. That's right. I'm going on to the sequel, baby. I really like the first Pikmin a lot. I mean, it was tremendously fun and interesting, and there were just some really cool aspects to it. The final boss was legitimately challenging, and it did take me quite a few times to finish it up. I might try to see if I can do a quick video on that, because I do have the the boss fight saved, and I may see like one day trying to go back to that. So exciting. I really liked the first one a lot. It was incredibly fun. It's one of those games that I know as a kid I wouldn't have had patience for, but as an adult, this is something so charming about it that I can't stand. Um, just kind of like recapping the original game. He's like a part of the shipping company. He crashed on this planet, used the Pikmin to fight it. I like how the planet's just shaped like America. <laughs> So, of course, the first game is just kind of like the magic and wonder of exploration. This game has got to take on, you know, the failings of the economy and pretty much every space program that's ever existed. <laughs> I was just watching videos today about the N1 uh, Russian fucking rockets. Those basically like the, the yin to the Apollo 11's yang. And boy, was that, fucking, <laughs> was that a fucking shit show and a half. Holy crap. I feel so bad for those guys. Octate Freight and local employee, Louie. So this is the first non Alamar human-related characters. I don't know if they're really humans. They never really say so or anything. <laughs> I'm so glad you're safe. Yes, very glad. Sadly, I have an announcement that is not so glad. Our company is going under. Yes, we are finished. On our first <laughs> mission, Louie here. Met a ravenous space bunny. <laughs> Look at this fucking dude. Load of golden pickpick brand carrots was eaten. <laughs> kind of fucking weirdo. I took out an enormous loan to repay the debt. I decided to sell off corporate assets to repay the loan. I sold your fucking ship, nigga. <laughs> I'm just I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. As for the rest of our loan. So we've got some serious China debt that we got to repay off, for real. Alimo! You brought that... Are they speaking Japanese? Is that what they've been talking the whole time and I didn't even realize that? One hundred pacos. This thing's worth one hundred. Nani? <laughs> I, I I can't tell if they're speaking Japanese or not. I don't think so. <laughs> Captain, basically, they're gonna send him and this weirdo Louie together. See, we're just flying right back into Africa again. I like how I said America when I meant the planet earlier. <laughs> I like how they fly to Africa. It looks like what they they kind of are landing in what appeared to be Africa, but it's fucking snowing as shit. Which is kind of cool. They didn't have any snow environments in the in the uh, previous game. I also had to say the that image looks like shit. <laughs> this is, that thing does not look 3D at all. <laughs> it looks like total crap right there. That is one of the worst looking images. I was about to compliment and say those those intro videos were actually pretty badass. Like they don't have a single, they don't have anything like that in the first game. He must have somehow fallen out of his cockpit. Yeah, because he's fucking dead. That's why. He, who the fuck can just fall out of a fucking spaceship? <laughs> While it's crashing to the fucking planet. Like, <laughs> it's just like, there's just crackling. <laughs> He's not breathing. <laughs> like, yeah, no shit, dude. He just, he just flew out of the windshield <laughs> into a space landing. <laughs> He's either floating or in danger. Or he's dead. Did you think about that? I don't remember if the ship fucking actually talks to you in the first game. I'm kind of thinking it did. Maybe it gave you instructions, but I also kind of felt like it was always done in Olimar's perspective. So he's just kind of talking to himself. So I don't know. It's like, again, it's like very like the Martian with just kind of like, uh, you know, 
video logs. I can't keep this fucking mouse off the fucking screen. Oh shit. You must be, you must help them quickly. Press B to call them with your whistle, Captain Olimar. Yeah, this fucking spaceship is like telling me what to do. You know, I already did this already, right? Like I did this a lot. <laughs> so yeah, it's like still kind of the basic concept. You do see there's two different characters on the corner screen, but a lot of this is kind of the same. I'd say the controls feel pretty smooth for the most part. It's about where I kind of remember it before. Adjusting the camera at the right. I can't remember if the right or the left button did it before. I'm not really sure. But you have to kind of like, the game doesn't have like a traditional 3D movement where it's always behind you. You always have to kind of like hit the button to make sure the camera is going in your direction. So kind of similar to before, uh, you can use the C stick, I think, to move around the Pikmin ever so slightly. You can't really, they still are locked onto you, but it's a nice way to kind of like maneuver around. And the game does do a lot to make you like test your maneuverability with the creatures. I also kind of cheat a little bit where I actually modify to where instead of hitting the B button to call them over, I just need to press down on the C stick. So I can kind of keep my finger on the C stick, maneuver around, call them back, and then like, you know, move them around accordingly. Like it really does help out with maneuverability. It's a little bit of cheating, but it's not like you can't do that on a Switch controller anyway. So I probably will wind up doing the same thing if I ever buy uh, Pikmin 3. That's really the main reason I want to buy this game is Pikmin 3. <clears throat> I am quite interested in the details of his condition. This fucking ship, dude. I, mean, I guess this he's the brains of the operation. It's kind of weird. I kind of preferred it when Olimar was kind of the guy. Ooh. I do like the uh, character design for the game. I, I do think they did a good job of like getting some really fun stuff out of it. It's kind of fun because I think some of the later games, too... I don't know, they really, uh, they, they add some really like, fun extra stuff in there, man. I think the newest one, they're gonna come out with Pikmin 4 eventually, and it's got a dog. Which is kind of weird. Little cute-ass, fat little pug dog. So this is the, uh... This is the little ship that the Pikmin use to kind of create. It's like their own little weird-ass starship. They're kind of weird. I mean, really, when you think about their ship and you think about what the things that they do, they're kind of like the killer clowns from outer space. Like, honestly, like, they, they, they fly, they land in this weird-ass little radish-looking ship. I think the Killer Clowns have, like, a really, like, like, tent, like a circus tent. They come onto planets, kill the life form in there, take the life form to their ship, and then eat it. Which is basically kind of like what Killer Clowns from Outer Space do, where they fucking put everybody in cotton candy balls and suck their blood. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Boop. All right. That's so cute. Look at him. Look at that cute little stupid bastard. What a cute little design, right? I always enjoy the Pikmin design. I think it works really well. It's simplistic, but it works on a different level. I think the eyes do a really good job of... Kind of bringing it together. <laughs> this game's got a lot of heart, man. It really is well done. I think they just, you can just tell the creator just have a lot of fun with the concept. And they, you know, there's just something very, uh, I don't know, like, I think, uh, they don't make it too dramatic. They kind of add like a really interesting explorative element. And there's just something about these type of Nintendo games. They kind of just make you feel like a kid. You just feel the wonder of the game that it's like trying to present to you. You know what I mean? And like the very simple concept that's going there. But it's like, I don't know. It's just super fun. You compare that to like playing like a Mass Effect game, which also is really awesome too. And I love those games, but kind of lose the, uh, just the, uh, I don't know, the simple wonder. You know what I mean? Of just like flying around and enjoying things. Um, you just kind of get so caught up in all of the uh, the, the storyline that you just kind of forget that, God damn, this is so crazy. It's kind of fun to do. Sorry about that. I'm actually going to kind of skip ahead just a tiny bit for the sake of content. We're going to go to day two. Day one was kind of just a basic synopsis of uh, the basic controls and everything with Pikmin, if you've never played it before. Um, you know, kind of just going through all the basic concepts of how to move around and control them and all that shit. Um, just to kind of a uh, little... Uh, Spark notes about just what happened. Um, Louis wound up finding this really blatant uh, product placement <laughs> in the middle of a Nintendo game in the form of a Duracell battery. 
I mean, I, I, I imagine that um, fucking GameCube was hurting pretty hard with uh, getting their ass kicked by the PlayStation and the fucking Xbox. So, yeah, I imagine they needed all that money they could possibly get. Make that money, Nintendo. Do what you got to do. But holy crap. Um, so they wound up finding that um, with the help of Olimar, who he winds up rendezvousing with. Louis and Olimar wound up taking the Duracell battery back to the ship, selling it for a certain amount of money. The day is finished. They go back up to space to make contact with their boss, who's just like, Oh, thank you for getting me shit, but I need more shit. Get me more shit! This is kind of more typical setup we'll see with the... You can see the three different onions, which indicates the three different Pikmin that are blue. I assume it's going to be yellow, red, and blue uh, Pikmin all over again. Although I do think there's evidence of more Pikmin coming through, which is interesting. Uh, what lazy creatures. Man, fuck you, dude. <laughs> You're just sitting on your fucking fat ass flying like just a dumbass, rickety-ass spaceship held up by fucking duct tape. You're talking shit to the Pikmin? Like, they're not lazy at all, man. They're basically doing this shit for free. <laughs> assholes <sighs> i work in the co i work in coffee industry and i've been to these farms so i know how this should be so typical day like this you can see the timer on the top we gotta start moving moving along pretty quickly you can't just be standing around the whole time you gotta be productive make things happen so the first thing we're gonna be doing right now is just gonna be gathering up a bunch of red these little red pucks and start feeding our pikmin accordingly um and they'll start making new plants and then we can kind of move on so let's keep gathering up going 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 one, two, three, four, five, one. Moving pretty quick here, and like I said, typically what I like to do is uh, perfect, not perfect the run, so to speak, but pretty much take as little damage as humanly possible in these type of days. You just want to move on, get as much of this crap done as quick as possible, and, uh, you know, just be as efficient as possible. Although... For what I'm aware, this particular game doesn't run on like a 30 day limit system like the first one did, where there was basically a timer where it's like after 30 days, if your ship isn't ready, you know, you're basically fucked. Like that was kind of the end of the game. You basically die more or less. It was game over for you. This particular game doesn't actually um, really uh, apply to that. So I don't really know how that works. Like, I don't know if this is just, like, student debt that basically just sits on it for however long. Is this debt accumulating? I guess not. Obviously not. But, uh, you know, for whatever reason, we have, I guess, an infinite amount of time to figure this out. So I don't really know if there's if it's going to be more about just, like, a hazard space-based kind of, uh, you know, work with this. Or we just got to be careful that we're not, like, running out of too many people. What I do love about Louis is that Louis actually does help you pick Pikmin, which is good. So you kind of get to pick them twice as fast which is good because sometimes this could be a little tedious like right there where like i accidentally instead of grabbing the plant i wound up throwing a few and then uh, it's very easy to get separated when you do that so you got to be really careful like you have to be quick on the trigger but you also can't be too quick because um the shit can be a little crazy sometimes now we have these plants here but i'm actually not going to use them quite yet because we, we have all the pikmin we need for this particular scenario we've got the four um that we need for this. So I'm gonna let those actually sit there because they'll actually flower and begin to kind of like, well, they'll bud first and then they'll, then if you wait long enough, they'll actually flower, which means they're actually stronger. I mean, um, like if you if your Pikmin move around long enough and find like certain um, particular like nectar or something like that, they'll actually gain, they'll actually wind up flowering. And that's a good thing because it actually makes your Pikmin stronger and everything like that. So if I don't need them, it's actually better sometimes to just let them sit there and chill. I'm gonna get the fucking jump on this bitch. He's he's fucking down and out for the count because fuck him. Okay, so typically I would take one of these out with like yellow Pikmin with explosives, but since we don't have any right now, we only have units, we're just gonna have to fucking bash the shit out of this thing. So I'm just gonna fucking overwhelm it right now with numbers. Come on, get him. Oh, we lost one. We lost one, unfortunately. RIP, bud. So we got those. While they're working, actually, I want to have these guys do, uh, because I can't really grab this can up for nothing right now. So what I'll do, just to save on some time, I'm going to have these little guys attack this wall. Because I'm going to wind up needing to, to come through here later. Even if I don't wind up getting to whatever's happening over here today, um, you know, I'm going to wind up needing to get through here later. So the more I, the f the more I do in this day, like breaking the walls like this and shit like that, I'm saving time for a later period for me to like be able to explore and continue on. 
as well as gathering up units and shit. So again, you're trying to make everyday efficient. See how these buds are starting to come in? I'm gonna wind up taking a few of these because it's already gonna start getting pretty congested over here pretty soon. So like I said, we got a pretty sizable army going on over here. Let's take a few more just for the fuck of it. And uh, let's keep rocking and rolling, man. Let's see what, see what we can go and do. But um, I guess while those guys are grabbing the can, I guess I'm going to wind up snagging a few more and see if I can break this uh, wall as fast as possible. Uh, and just keep on keeping on here. Let's see. Like I said, it's good to have Louie as a second hand to pick stuff with. That's for damn sure. And like I said, I assume I can leave Louie where he is and then like come back to him and kind of use him as a separate character. But it's a little weird. Like, uh, I, I don't really know how comfortable I'm going to be to doing that at first. At some point, I'm assuming the game... You know, Nintendo games are always pretty good at, like, if there's an innovation, they're going to make you figure it out. You know what I mean? They're gonna, You're going to use that innovation to the, to the T. You're not just going to be able to just, you know, avoid whatever thing they're asking you to do. So I'm assuming there's going to be points where me and Louie are going to be separated, that Louie's going to have to do certain things, then I'm going to have to do something on the other side. It just adds another piece to the puzzle, ultimately. All right. Giant ass fucking crumbled up tin can. Uh, utter scrap. 170, 170 coins. Alright, so we've got plenty of numbers right now. We're going to leave those guys over there button for a little bit longer. And uh, let's go down to the... Uh, let's, uh, let's keep moving through this uh, wall area over here. See that wall just broke? Alright. Destroy such a massive wall when... Their might is ferocious. Damn right it is, ho. Did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin command protocol? Apparently not. Olimar, you're failing in your duty as a superior. Allow me to explain. Shut the fuck up. <sighs> yeah, let's go down this giant cavernous asshole in the earth. <laughs> let's see what happens. Yes, enter the hole with your Pikmin squad. Woo! So yeah, this is not something that happened in the original game at all. And this does bring one layer of weird, like, a curveball that I'm not aware. The fact that the game saves. Now, why would that be a problem? Not really anything in particular, but one thing I did notice about this game, and I noticed it because I actually tried to go through a bit of this before, is that... There's no restart of a day cycle like in the other games. And this is like one of those things where like I should be able to perfect my run if I want for the day and make the most out of it. But this game doesn't really give you an option to do that. So I think it like it kind of goes around that concept by again not making a like a 30 day requirement like you need to do all this shit in 30 days. But I also do think that kind of limits everything as well. Like, I would really like to be able to, like I said, I don't like losing Pikmin. Like, so if the day's over and I don't get a chance to redo that again, it kind of sucks. Like, I'd like to be able to kind of redo that run. And I don't really know how time works down in this area either, because like, is time still moving? There's no indication of a sundial when you're down here to indicate that the day is actually passing. So, I don't know. It's a little weird. It's a little different. And I think they know they fucked up because apparently in the later game they went back to being able to restart the day cycles. Um, oh my god. Hold on, hold on. I stand over here. I'm just gonna bring these guys over here real quick. A 7-up bottle. So, I mean, yeah, there's clearly an indication that this is, um, the world like the modern world today oh my god so i just want to like get him over here because i don't want to attract the attention of the other guys come on bitch fucking ass over here oh shit come at me ho i don't know let's see if i can just get him real quick got him and i think you can actually get these guys back and bring them back over here See, like, when they're in packs like that, it's hard because you don't want another... You don't want to get swarmed 
and have numbers versus numbers. You want to take them out individually, like the fucking Viet Cong. <laughs> this is guerrilla warfare tactics, bitch. This is some nasty ass shit. So, little fucker isn't moving, which is kind of sucks. I really want to see if I can draw him over here a little bit. Sometimes they'll run after you, which is nice. But in this particular case, like this guy over here, I just want him to move. I just don't want him to be next to this other dude because he's gonna wind up ganging up on my poor little Pikmin. Get your ass over here, ho. Maybe I could just get him. Oh, oh, oh. I just don't want them to get swarmed if I don't have to. Oof. Yeah, fuck out of here. All right. All right, we got this guy and now he's fucked. This dude's fucked. Boom, fuck out of here. All right, let's swarm it. Let's see if we can get it. Nice. $180 for a fucking orange. I don't know why that's worth money, but okay. So we're just going. We're just going deep down into the, the murky waters of this underworld. So I guess we just keep going. And again, there's no timer in this area. So I don't know if this is just like a trial thing where you just kind of... Like, am I going to wake up and the day's going to be over and I'm going to be fucked? So like, I'm kind of worried about that. I mean, I'm assuming if the game's making you save that it wouldn't fuck you in the ass like that. And just make you keep going. And there's not really a great indication to me at this point of like, how much money should I be getting in a day? Like, is it a bad thing that I'm trying to grab more money in a day? Should I have just ended the day and be done with it already at the final floor? Like, should I have just stopped and just kept moving on with my life or what? You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to know 100%. So you got this globe, but unfortunately you can't really do anything with it. Look at that. That's fucking America. Slash the other Mexico. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I stand by it. So what I think is going to happen, this is just my, my assessment of it, because clearly it's 101, because you can only have 100 Pikmin at one time in any day. So it's clearly indicating that, like, no matter what, you're not going to be able to lift this thing up, even if you had a full army, which I don't. Um, but what I, my, my best guess is that those little green, those fat Pikmin that we've seen indications of, and I have seen in Smash and things like that, um, are gonna be a factor. Like maybe they're not their own type of Pikmin, but they turn into like super Pikmin, or maybe they're able to like hold more at a time. That's my guess, is that rather than getting more Pikmin, you just get like super jacked up, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of Pikmin that are more like Mark Henry kind of Pikmin. <laughs> so right there, like you really want it like right on top of them. Got him. <laughs> I like how they do like a little battle cry too whenever they fuck people up. Oh, I see what's going on here. So these buds are definitely going to be the key to this, I think. They're going to turn some of these Pikmin into super... Astonishing. A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. Toss fucking your mama's flower. Yeah, look at those big fat little bastards. Let's uh, let's wait a few seconds here. What's up? Yeah, look at them. Oof. Big old chunky chunko. Yeah, look at that big old boy. He's got a big old belly too. He right? has hair and is quite stocky. It seems it's a Guido pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm like this today. I don't shouldn't have to. I shouldn't be like this. So I think the idea at this point will be probably, if I had to take a guess, is to we're gonna need to get as many of these Pikmin as possible, probably make all of these guys go in there. All f uh, quite a few of them. Because I don't I think it's gonna be if I had to take a guess, I'm gonna say that each Pikmin is gonna wind up being like I don't know, like, probably like the, t the power of two. Oh no, wait, maybe not. I guess that's the only amount you can get. What happened to little fat guys? Oh, they're a little slower. Oh, that's gonna suck ass <laughs> later on down the line, but let's see. Oh, 
That's crazy. They take out a shit ton, dude. Out. Holy crap. They lifted the fuck out of that thing. I only had like 20 or so, and they just fucking lifted that bitch up, dude. Look at them motherfuckers, dude. Damn, dude. Those little chunks are moving. Holy crap. Ah, get ourselves out of here, maybe. Sensors indicate that it is entirely enough power to launch you into the air, approaching it and press A to try. What is your, how did your sensors figure that out, honestly? What did your, what kind of mathematics did your sensors just do right now to be like, just instantly shot like a fucking equation that was able to get me to fly all the way up into that fucking hole up in the ceiling? Like, uh, what kind of math did you do right there for that, honestly? There it goes. All right, we're rocking and rolling, bitches. 200 fazoles each. Bang, bang, bang. Look at those little fat bastards barely moving along in the background. Oh, oh, oh shit, guys, wait, hold on. I wonder if I can throw them for him a little bit. Like, I wonder how easy they are to throw. All right, let's do this crap. Let's get back out into the day. I really hope the timer stopped. Please, God, hope the timer stopped. Damn, treasure salvaged. Cave complete. Okay, that's kind of cool. So there's gonna be a bunch of little caves that we can like kind of scavenge. Definitely some new tech, man. Definitely some new shit going on in there. Love the sparkles, that's a nice touch. Never hate little Fiesta sparkles in the background. Love it. God, please, please, daytime, just be exactly where it was before. Don't be like right at the end of the day. Please, I'm begging you, I'll suck your dick. Olimar and Louis, since you will be exploring a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize, but... But you are exhausted. Fuck you, dude! We still got time! Take it slow and steady. Fuck your fucking... I'll take your mom fucking slow and steady, you piece of shit. Oh my god, dude. I hope I get to keep those guys. No! If I find out those little guys got left behind, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna restart this whole thing if I find out those guys got left there. No, I didn't get a chance to pick them. Oh, that's bullshit. Aw, oh, man. Oh. That's fucking lame, man. God damn it, man. God damn it. What are you gonna do, man? What are you gonna do with days like today? You know, you bust your ass off. And you ultimately kind of realize your work means nothing. Because ultimately we always, we want our work to mean something. Whatever the hell it is you're doing. Whether you're being sexual chocolate, you're fucking lifting up fucking tow trucks and whatever the fuck else he was doing for, I don't know, it's all sorts of weird shit. It's, it's kind of weird. Or, you know, you could be like what I'm doing basically, which is basically a space homeless person collecting cans for money. <laughs> you know, trying to uh, pay off a, you know, debt basically accumulated by business malpractice. And somehow that's my problem. But, you know, we want our work to mean something, you know, and, and when it's not done the way, when you got days like this where it just does not work, there's just really only one thing to do. I want you to take some notes here. This is, you know, you got, a, you got a day interacting with some people you don't like, some stupid spaceships telling you what to do, some fucking bullshit rule set and everything like that, and time just passing way too fast for yourself. You do this. Hit that good old load state, and you begin anew. Hi, welcome back to the Scrub Sessions. This is Eric Campos. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a playthrough of Pikmin 2 today. And I, I just, I really, really enjoyed the first Pikmin game. And I just My love is growing. My love is growing. And I just can't pretend anymore. 